Hola. First, sorry for this video taking so long for me to make. We recently got this adorable little butthole, and he takes up all of my time right now. Don't worry, we still have Kai. She says what's up, and she's not jealous of the new pup at all. But right, on to the vid. Okay, so, it's 2021, FPV cars are dope, and you want to build one. Well, buckle in, sit tight, and let's make that happen. You know, there's not enough FPV car content on YouTube right now. Drop me a like if you want to see more. So, to get started, we have three different video frequencies, and they range from about 50 bucks to, please don't tell my wife I bought this, and... Here they are. Now, the first one up is 5.8 gigahertz, which everybody loves because it's cheap and it's available just about anywhere. Also, it works with your 2.4 gigahertz radio with nothing to worry about. But there is a downside. You're never gonna make it through your whole neighborhood with this system, at least not without ridiculous power outputs. But if you wanna drop about 50 bucks on an inexpensive little setup like this, you could get a really cool cruiser for around your house or office. This has been one of my favorite things to do with FPV cars so far. But if you want to give 5.8 your best shot outdoors, you'll need an 800 milliwatt VTX, a good camera, set of goggles, and longer antennas for the car. Now, here's my 5.8 setup. It's pretty basic, but I just wanted to show you early on in the video how simple a setup can be. You can really put something together like this with an old used car and it can work great. When I do run this 5.8 setup, I use this stock remote and this set of Fat Shark goggles. It's super easy to set up and I can about get to the end of my block with it. Next up is 1.3 gigahertz, which might actually be my favorite on any given day. See, I built this ground station that I can put outside on my deck and then I use this 5.8 gigahertz transmitter as a repeater, sending video back to my receiver here and into my TV. So I can shred my whole neighborhood from my couch. How dope is that? Let me know in the comment section if you want me to do a video on that. But for now, let's get to 1.3 gigahertz's pros and cons and figure out if it's the right video frequency for you. First, 1.3 gigahertz can have the best range if it's done properly. It can be just as affordable as a good 5.8 gigahertz setup if you omit some expensive goggles. And last, it's TV compatible. But now, on to the cons. The truth is, 1.3 gigahertz is not right for most people because it's much harder to use than other frequencies. It's not compatible with your 2.4 gigahertz radio and it's even hard to use with other UHF systems. But I have figured out a pretty good way to use Crossfire with 1.3 gigahertz. And the last con for 1.3 gigahertz is the antennas are just more fragile than the other frequencies. They're bigger and just harder to mount in a safe spot. And that brings us to our last video frequency the DJI FPV system. And right off the bat, I wanna say there are no low end options for the DJI system. You have to buy their goggles, their video transmitter, their camera, their entire system. But honestly, it's the one that I use the most because it works with everything and the video quality is so good. This is gonna be the system that I show off in this video. It's the one that I think most people will be happy with at the end of the day. But before I get into that, we have to get into our control link. Now, honestly, there is so much that I could get into with this that I'm just going to tell you what's good. This is the system I've been using lately. It's an air remote, basically the one used for a drone, and a crossfire. Now, the best thing to do would be to make the crossfire system work with a ground remote because driving an RC car is way better with a normal ground remote, right? Well, there's actually a couple different ways that we can accomplish that. The first one that I thought of was using a P3 
PWM to PPM converter and then wiring your car's receiver to the input and your crossfire transmitter module to the output. This has an added benefit for 1.3 gigahertz because it allows you to put your crossfire transmitter farther away from your 1.3 gigahertz receiver. More on that in a different video, but again, it allows you to use the ground remote with the crossfire transmitter. The second idea is just using a trainer cable with your standard ground remote and then wiring that directly into the crossfire transmitter. I'll put up a quick schematic of this so that people can get started on it at home, but I'm going to make a video on it too because I feel like this is the best way to do it. And now, onto my go-to car setup. This is my four-wheel drive DJI Crossfire Truggy. It's the one that you see in all of my videos right now. It sends live video back to these goggles and has amazing video clarity. I'm using this remote with a Crossfire module in the back, similar to this one. I use some upgraded antennas on my goggles. You can see mine look a little bit different. First off, the little nubbies on the top are true RC stubby antennas, and they're nice because it lets you fit the goggles back inside the bag. The second antenna system is the iFlight crystal patch antennas, which are built into the faceplate, and this really allows for the best range. You need to have a set of directional antennas along with a set of omnidirectional antennas so that you can drive behind you and out in front of you long distances. Another really important part that I wanted to touch on is that heat sinks are not enough to keep your video transmitters cool. I had to build a little fan system for every single car because you have to turn the power pretty much up as high as it will go on any system you use in order to get good video. See, video is the most difficult part with RC cars because getting the signal off of the ground and back to you is just more difficult. But one trick that FPV cars can take advantage of that's harder for drones is using these high gain omnidirectional antennas. Since we don't flip upside down, on purpose anyway, we can use these high gain antennas without really any penalty. Now, I wanted to freeze the frame right here to show how my video transmitter is mounted. I feel like this is the thing that nobody else was doing in other videos. So here it is. It's mounted to the underside of my body and I use these little extensions for the antennas. Here's another freeze frame of the wiring of my car. You can see how I have this red JST pigtail coming off of my battery lead, which allows me to power up the air unit. You can also see that I have some extra fans on my ESC and my motor. And it's because I'm kind of running this car at full bore all the time. So yeah, it just made sense to add some extra cooling. I filmed this next part trying to explain how I mounted my crossfire incorrectly, but at the end of the day, I get perfectly fine range and I haven't broken anything yet. So it's really not a bad way to mount it just like this. Here's how I did my wiring. And it's pretty straightforward. I actually went through and did this whole video on soldering up the receiver and everything like that. And then I realized TBS actually just sells a PWM receiver now. Just buy that and plug everything in like you would with a normal RC car receiver. And that's pretty much it. You can go out and build your own FPV car now. I convinced a few of my friends to do the same thing. And they sent me some pictures for y'all to check out. Hopefully this is some good inspiration. I also filmed this long range video at this big field I found. There's a construction site in the middle that I got to crawl through and it was just dope. Hopefully you guys enjoy this and yeah, be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comment section if you want to see anything else like this. Okay, right on. Enjoy the video.